I told him, Oga, you don't shoot me. He said, yes, I shoot you. And I will shoot you again. I will kill you. That moment, my wife called me. She doesn't know maybe anything happened or not. She just called me, called my number. The officer picked the call and told my wife, your husband is dead. Come to Ikeja to come and pick his corpse. My name is Salah Okodri Adeyemi, popularly known as Wale Balogu. I'm a clearing agent. I work in a papa. I'm a custom licensed clearing agent. On the 17th of March 2021, I took delivery of the Toyota RAV4 2019 model, which I collected the valuation through valuation units of Nigeria Custom Service by DC Wako. Initially, I was given 1.5 million era. When they wrote the 1.5 million era, they took it to him to sign. The man refused to sign it, and he said they should go and write 1.7 million era as surface duty of that vehicle, which I paid. The total is 2,367,000. I did the examination for the vehicle. The mileage is over 23,000. I was coming from Tinkan. When I get to Bega, before Otto Wolf, a custom federal operation unit stopped me and they asked for the documents. I gave him the documents. I know what he was expecting from me is to add officer on duty, which is money. But I just gave him the document and he said, get down. I said, you have the document with you. You can check what you want to check from the documents. Why should I? He said I should insist that I should get down. When he said I should get down, and I was still sitting down inside the vehicle, he brought out a knife. I wanted to stab me. I waved it. He used his gun to eat me. So when I said, when he started shouting, get down, get down, immediately I was coming down from that car. He shot me straight. And I told him, Oga, you don't shoot me. He said, yes, I shoot you. And I will shoot you again. I will kill you. So then, I was trying, you know, with the gunshot, people were coming. And immediately I was trying to crawl from that place. He dragged me inside gutter. I come down, I come out from the gutter and my phone ring. My boss called me. Um, I was in my office in mile two. So we heard a gunshot. So I called Wale. Hello, Wale, where are you? I heard a gunshot. So he was like, they shot me, they shot me, they shot me. When the officer heard I was receiving call, he collected the phone from me and put it in his pocket. And he was telling me, I will give you water. You will die. I will kill you. I will do this. So in that process, some SPU unit uh, police officer came to that place was asking other officer what happened. So then I wanted to move again. He carried me, he said I will not go anywhere. He was asking me, how am I going to start the vehicle? Because they cannot start. He said, I said, okay, match break because I was in pain. And he was threatening me to shoot my second leg if I didn't tell him how to start the car. So then I told him, just match the brake, the car will start. So they wanted to put me in their van and take me. So one of them now said, leave that boy, let make him go, I beg, leave her making the go. On that fateful day, I was at the office and I had the conversation. Then I went downstairs, I took bike. On getting there, I saw a lot of custom there, they were shooting like. I was trying to go close, an officer met me like, if you come close, I go shoot you. I said, I'll go with I do now, my friend be that now. He said, go back. I, said, I listened to him, I went back. Later on, I noticed he crossed to the other side then. I went close to Wally. I saw him on blood. He was shot at the leg. He was on ground. His cloth was torn and everything. Like I was so sad. Like what was going on? Then I have to stop bike. I took him to the hospital, close to Kri Kri town. When we get there, the doctor saw it was a gunshot. He said, ah, "Who shot him?" I said, "It was custom." He didn't request us for police report, but he do mention it like he's going to treat him but we'll get the police report later. He took him to the theater. I was at the theater with him. He went through the injuries. There was no 
scratches on the bone. On my way going to the hospital, his wife called me. Hello sir, where's my husband? My husband, I want to talk to my husband. My husband, she was crying, really crying. So I was like, uh, I said, your husband is fine. There's nothing wrong, he's fine, he's okay. But she was crying, insisting she wants to talk to her husband. So when I got to the hospital, I saw Wally. I was like, Wally, did you call your wife? He said, no. I said, she's insisting, she's crying seriously that she wants to see her husband, she wants to talk to her husband that she's on her way to the hospital. So, and she got to the hospital crying seriously. She backed her baby, she has a small baby. So when she got to the hospital, I was asking her, what happened? How did you get here? How did you know what happened? And she was like, she called her husband's phone that someone picked it and said, they have killed your husband. Come and carry your husband's corpse. So hearing that, I was like, okay. I took her to her husband. She saw her husband. She was crying. Her husband even asked her what happened. That, Why are you crying? I'm fine. I'll be okay, you know. That same day in the hospital, I saw the DPO Trinity police station. He brought an envelope saying the deputy controller of custom that sent the DPO to bring the envelope, which we rejected. But later in the day, I went back to the DPO to get the envelope after asking our colleagues and other people um, about it. While some said I should collect, some said no. But at the end of the day, we received the envelope and... On Friday, OC Rover of Nigeria Custom Unit, Mr. Jack, uh, I don't know his other name, Jack, he, he sent someone again to come and give me 100,000 Naira. Making two hundred thousand naira, they gave me. So and even the hospital, the hospital I went to, collected more than two hundred thousand naira. When I left the hospital, they gave me list of drugs to go and use. The next day after the incident, the incident happened on Wednesday. On Thursday, I heard they, they were coming to the hospital to come and pick me up. They want to. So it was our vice president of Nigeria, uh, of an uh, of, uh, uh, agent uh, association that took me from that hospital to another hospital for adequate treatment. And since then, we have been doing one or two things to buy drugs, to go to another hospital. I, I normally do the dress up of this wound every blessed day, taking drugs, taking injection. I saw some news that the PPRO of custom said I was dragging gun with the officer. Why will I drag gun with him? And if the officer can come out and say I drag gun with him, let us go and do fingerprints. Maybe my hand will be on the gun. And they, after that, that time, they go away with the car. Up to now, nothing has happened. I didn't hear anything from them. They did not, nobody called me. They did not call me. They did not even talk anything about my health. This, our industry, this work, this work I'm doing, if you are not there, you are not there. If people are seeing you, they can say, okay, oh, come and take this, come and do this, come and do that. But I'm not, I cannot do anything. I can't be going everywhere with crushes. And as a family man, I can't be sitting down at home. For, long, for, for how long will I be doing that? I've never experienced anything like gone in my life before. So, <laughs> if I should tell you the pain I'm going through now, 